In this video, we solve problems five and six from quiz number seven of the fall 2020 semester for elementary differential equations. Problems five and six cover standard L26, which is about shifting and translation theorems, the Heaviside function and unit step function and convolution. Um, in this standard, we're really just interested in computing transforms and inverse transforms involving the shifting and translation theorems, the Heaviside function and convolution. And a later standard, we will solve initial value problems that feature the use of these um, theorems and the use of these definitions um, in order to solve either initial value problems or integral equations or integral differential equations. So in this problem, we're given a piecewise function and we're asked to use the definition of the heavy side function and one of our shifting theorems to find the Laplace transform of f of t. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write f in terms of the heavy side function so that we can use a shifting theorem to compute its Laplace transform. So I would start this way. f of t starts with the function two. So you just write that down. And then you turn off the function uh, y equals two at t equals three. In order to turn this function off at t equals three, you take two and you multiply by the heavy side function at t minus three. Then at t equals three, we want to turn this polynomial function on. So we'll add that polynomial times the heavy side function at t minus three. And then if we want to, we can simplify this, that two is still there. I've got t squared minus eight t plus 10 times this heavy side function minus two times the same heavy side function. So when I combine those, I get t squared minus 8t plus 8 times the heavy side function at t minus 3. So now I've got this sum of two functions. One of the functions features the heavy side function. In order to compute the Laplace transform of this, I want to use um, one of my translation theorems. Um, we had two versions of this. We had f of t minus a times h of t minus a is equal to e to the negative as times the Laplace transform of f of t, which is denoted by f of s. And then we had an alternative form of this. We said if it wasn't obvious what this was in terms of t minus a, so I don't see expressions involving t minus 3 over here. An alternative form of this theorem was this. If you have a function of t times the heavy side function at t minus a, then the Laplace transform is e to the negative a s times the Laplace transform of not g of t, but g of t plus a. And so that's what we're going to use here. So now let's compute the Laplace transform of f of t. We compute the Laplace transform term by term. The Laplace transform of two is just two over s. And then here, we're pattern matching. So we're calling this g of t, and we're calling this h of t minus a. If that's the case, then a must be three. So according to this result, the Laplace transform of this must be e to the negative a s, where a is equal to three. That's e to the negative 3s times the Laplace transform of g of t plus 3. That's what this says. So I just take all of my t's and I replace them with uh, t plus 3s and simplify. So I have t plus 3 squared minus 8 times t plus 3 plus 8. And we'll do some algebra. If you write that twice in FOIL, you'll get this. Distribute the negative eight. And then collect like terms. We've got t squared, six t minus eight t is negative two t. Then we have um, negative 24 uh, plus eight is negative 16. Negative 16 plus nine is negative seven. That's our g of t plus three. So in that case, the Laplace transform of f of t is this. It's t two over s, excuse me, 
plus e to the negative as, where a is three, of the Laplace transform of t squared minus 2t minus 7. And the Laplace transform of t to the n is n factorial over s to the n plus 1. And of course, the Laplace transform of 1, which I already used once here, is 1 over s. So we're going to use these two and the linearity of the Laplace transformation operator to evaluate the Laplace transform of this function. So we'll have the Laplace transform of t squared, which is 2 factorial over s to the 2 plus 1, that's s cubed. So n is 1, or sorry, n is 2 here. And 2 factorial happens to be 2. So I'm going to bring the negative 2 down. Then we think of that as a t to the first. The Laplace transform of a t to the first is 1 factorial over s to the 1 plus 1. So that's 1 over s squared. And then I've got a constant. The Laplace transform of the constant is that constant over s. That's the Laplace transform of f of t. Okay, so that's problem five on um, quiz number seven. Now let's look at problem six. So in number six, we're asked to use the shifting theorems, also known as translation theorems, the heavy side function, the definition of convolution and the table of Laplace transforms to compute the following. Now I actually think that there's an entry in the table that looks just like this. It has T times cosine of KT I think I want to use one of the shifting theorems to find this, but then we'll con um, confirm our answer by looking at that table. So we have a shifting theorem, or actually a, a theorem that allows us to take the Laplace transform of something that looks like this. Remember that theorem was this. If you have t to the n times f of t, that Laplace transform turned out to be negative 1 to the n times the nth derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of f of t. So you compute that Laplace transform, you take its nth derivative, and then you multiply by negative 1 to the n. So that's appropriate here. Your n is equal to 1, because that's t to the n, and this is our f of t. So according to this rule, we'll have negative 1 to the first times the first derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of cosine of 2t. Here, k is equal to 2, and we know that the Laplace transform of cosine of kt is s over s squared plus k squared. So this is really the negative derivative of this quotient, s over s squared plus k squared, where k is 2, where k is 2. So I've got s over s squared plus 4. Now when I use or when I want to take the derivative of something that looks like that, I can use the quotient rule. So we'll say, according to the quotient rule, we get the bottom function, say low d high, low d high, it's derivative of the top function, minus high times the derivative of the bottom function, all over the bottom function squared. And if we distribute that one and simplify, we get s squared plus four minus two s squared all over s squared plus four quantity squared. s squared minus two s squared is negative s squared. And we're adding four to that. And we have s squared plus four quantity squared in the denominator. If we distribute that negative, and we change the order that becomes four, or excuse me, uh, this is already four minus s squared and it's multiplied by negative one. So now we'll multiply through by the negative one and that will become s squared minus four over s squared plus four quantity squared. Now we used that shifting theorem, or not that shifting theorem, the um, derivatives of a transform theorem, which we actually use in, in the reverse order. If we've got t to some power times f of t, 
we can write that in terms of the derivative of the transform of f of t. Um, but we can also just look this up in our table. Let's go to our table and see if we can't find a t to the first times cosine of kt and see if we get the same answer using the table. So we see that we have t times cosine of kt in our table. It's right here. It's entry number 23. According to this formula, it's s squared minus k squared over s squared plus k squared quantity squared. If our k is two, we should have s squared minus four over s squared plus four quantity squared. And we see that that's exactly what we got using this theorem. So you can either just directly apply that rule from the table or you can use this and either way you're gonna get the same answer. Now let's look at part B. In part B, we have the Laplace transform of an integral from zero to T. Now that looks like a convolution. So I would go to the definition of a convolution. Remember the convolution has this pattern. It's the integral from zero to T of F of tau times G of T minus tau D tau. Now don't let the fact that they're using an F here rather than a G bother you. It's just, this is just a form for the convolution of F and G, and it turns out, as we proved earlier, that that operator is commutative. So the convolution of F and G is the same as the convolution of G and F. So um, if we wanted to, we could switch the order, but that's not necessary here. Um, this is playing the role of that F of tau because it's a function of tau only. I'll use, I'll use F star of tau to say that that F is different from that F. And then this one is g of t minus tau. So with that in mind, I see that this is the convolution of this function f with whatever that function is. That function satisfies this. f star of tau is e to the tau minus e to the negative tau. So that means that f star of t must be equal to e to the t minus e to the negative t. So that's, this is the convolution of f of t from here with this e to the t minus e to the negative t. So I would write that this way. This is the Laplace transform of this. And then according to our convolution theorem, we have this, the Laplace transform of the convolution of f and g is the Laplace transform of F times the Laplace transform of G, which is just F of S times G of S. So we'll have the Laplace transform of E to the T minus E to the negative T. Times the Laplace transform of F. Now, actually, I might simplify this a little bit. That looks a lot like the um, hyperbolic sine of t, but there's a one half factor missing. So I think I will multiply by one half and compensate for that by multiplying by two as well. So that's a two over one. Two over one times one half is just multiplying the whole thing by one. Well, that is the hyperbolic sine of t. Well, the Laplace transform of the hyperbolic sine of kt is k over s squared minus k squared. So what we're going to have here is two times the Laplace transform of hyperbolic sine of one t, so k is equal to one, and the Laplace transform of hyperbolic sine of one t is equal to this. The numerator is one and the denominator is s squared minus one squared. And then we're going to take that and multiply by the Laplace transform of f, which is f of s. And if we multiply all of those together, we get two times f of s over s squared minus one. And that is the Laplace transform for part b. Now let's look at part c. Now part c involves our last function. Notice we have an e to the negative a s times a function of s. I would write it that way. And then I would think of this this way. 
as the inverse transform of e to the negative a s times f of s. Now we have a rule for that. That's one of our shifting theorems. This is the inverse transform of f of s. That would give us f of t. But then we replace all the t's with t minus a's, and then we multiply by the heavy side function at t minus a. So that gives us f of t minus a times h of t minus a. So that's what we're going to apply here. We just have to identify a. Um, just through pattern matching, we see if that's a negative 5s and that's a negative as, a must be 5. So this will be the inverse transform of 1 over s squared plus 9. That's going to give me f of t, but then I want to replace the t with t minus 5 and then multiply by the heavy side function at t minus 5. I don't have a pattern exactly like this in my table. I know that I have an inverse transform of a constant over s squared plus k squared. That's a sine of kt. But that requires me to have a constant k in the numerator. Here, k squared is 9. k is always positive, so that means k is equal to 3. That means I need a 3 in the numerator. Well, I can make that happen. I'll just multiply by 3. That's fine, as long as I also compensate by multiplying by 1 third. So now we can take the inverse transform of this piece and we get one third times sine of kt where k is three. But then we don't just leave that as a three or a, a, a three t, excuse me. We replace the t with t minus five. So this is f of t minus five times h of t minus five. And that is our inverse transform. So that is the last problem covering that standard on quiz number um, seven. In the next quiz, we will look at Laplace transforms involving um, these types of operations.